Okay, hi everyone, welcome. This is going to be a short tutorial on creating a piping bag icing adapter or nozzle. This nozzle is gonna be customizable uh, to create uh, basically like a flower shape uh, and we can change the number of triangles thus changing the extrusion shape. So I'd like to start off by showing you what the final product looks like or could look like, and this is what it is. We've got a piping bag nozzle here. Let me go back to uh, the research that I did first, just to give us a sense of the different types of things we're looking for in the design constraints. So a piping bag nozzle uh, has some sort of extrusion tip on it, and we fill icing into a bag, and then that nozzle fits into the tip of the bag here. So I kind of noticed in my research, there was two ways to do it. One with a flat face, here and then one with an open face like that and I chose to use the open face. This is intended for 3D printing so I also found a picture of one that was 3D printed so this is kind of what we're what we're going for here today. We can see that based on the number of uh, triangles we really change the texture of the extrusion and that's the effect that we're going for. Here, here we've got zero all the way up to I don't know maybe a dozen we get a very fine texture there. And we want the user to be able to use our file to change the number, uh, to, to be able to change the texture. During our process, we, all don't, we also don't know exactly what is, the, uh, what is the perfect size for this for our piping bags. We want to be able to change the size too. So some other ones that uh, I, I found in the process were uh, this, this type of shape here. There's lots of different kinds of shapes and folds we could make. So I was just kind of being aware of what I could, what I could choose from. And then last but not least, I found a video of somebody extruding with the piping bag, just like this, so that I could get a sense of what this really looks like when I go to make it. One more thing, I noticed that in some designs, they have this rim at the top here, and I think that that helps prevent it from falling out of the bag and creates a better seal uh, between the icing and the nozzle. So we're gonna make that rim as well because I think that that part will be important. Okay, so going from our final design over to a new design, a brand new design in Fusion, you can just open up Fusion or press Control N for a, a new document. And here we go. We're gonna start with the sketches, but looking at my workspace, uh, there's a couple things I wanna take care of first. One, Fusion is telling me that there is some maintenance coming up and that's in my way. So I'll just hit the X button to uh, get that out of my way. Next is, I always, you always wanna save your design before you start. So I'm gonna press Control S and I'm gonna save this in a new project and I'll call that piping bag nozzle. There we go, we've got my piping bag nozzle. I have to actually click on it to be able to get into it as a folder. And now when I go to save it in its location, piping bag nozzle, I'm starting to save it there. So we will just call this the nozzle. All right, I'm ready to design. I'm gonna start by doing the bottom sketch of the, the circle first. So I'm gonna be clicking on create a new sketch at the top left in the design workspace. And I'll select the bottom uh, plane or the ground plane, which is the Z, X or blue and red uh, axes. So that plane, a plane is formed when two uh, axes are intersecting. There we go. And so now I'm drawing on the bottom or the ground plane and my bottom shape is going to be a circle. So I selected circle from the sketch tools and I'm gonna snap everything to the origin here. The origin is a fixed point in space uh, that that doesn't move. It's it's essentially the the zero point or where all the axis numbers are equal to zero, and that's helpful to use in sketching because then uh, our geometry doesn't move around. It moves from that origin. My circle here uh, needs to be a certain diameter, and I want to be able to change that diameter. So now I'm going to need to create a parameter. Parameters will let me just like algebra change uh, the values, uh, and then the design will be updated from there. If I press S to open up my uh, sh sketch shortcuts menu, I'll be pressing S a lot in this tutorial. I can type parameters or just start typing para, and I want change parameters. 
I'm going to go to this menu a couple times throughout the tutorial to be able to add and then edit the uh, variable values uh, or the parameters. So I'm going to create a new user parameter. And this will be my bottom diameter for the piping nozzle. So I'll just type bottom dia. And I'll work in millimeters. I think the beginning of my biotum the diameter, I think I'm going to do it as 2 uh, centimeters or 20 millimeters, and we'll see how that goes. Another good practice uh, would be to create some comments so that in the future you know what this is for. So the bottom diameter, uh, this is just simply the bottom diameter of the piping nozzle. Now I need to apply that parameter to the diameter of my circle. Adding a sketch dimension from the sketch create menu uh, is going to allow me to constrain or restrict the rules around the geometry I've created. So a dimension is just a rule that says that by clicking on the diameter of the circle here, or the circumference of it, I'm setting the diameter of the circle to my bottom diameter. And anytime I change my bottom diameter value, this will change. After hitting enter, that is applied, and it often changes the scale. Let's say you start out all the way down here now. If you double click on your mouse three button, which is the scroll wheel, if you have a, a mouse, it zooms it in to fit the window. Okay, so that is set. Now I wanna be able to have my top diameter as well. That's where we're going with this. So I'm gonna need some sort of relationship between the bottom and the top up here somewhere. So I will go into parameters and start to set up that relationship. That's going to be my height. And we'll make that 40. We'll make it twice the size of the diameter to start. So now I can reference height. I need to be able to create a sketch uh, that's 40 millimeters or my height further from the bottom here. So I'll turn my origin on so that I can be reminded that I'm working the origin and see some of these planes and axes here. Then I'll go to the construct menu and I'm going to make an offset plane. I'll click on the ground plane and I'm going to create an offset from that. My offset value uh, is going to be equal to the height. And that's all I need to do. Now, anytime I create a sketch here, its uh, position is always going to be uh, the height above my, the ground here. So I'll make a new sketch onto the construction plane I just created. And I'll create a circle, snapping it to the origin. This keeps everything centered. Now, uh, here I need some sort of value to represent the upper diameter uh, of my circle. And I think in this case, I'm just gonna make it relative to the bottom diameter. So I'll make it the bottom diameter and it just needs to be some sort of function bigger. So let's say times 1.25, maybe even times 1.5. So uh, it'll always be one and a half times bigger than the bottom. There we go. Don't be confused, even though that we're looking at this in a two-dimensional view, it looks like they're just on the same plane together, doesn't it? But if I use right-click to orbit, I can see that they are separated. Using the view cube, if I switch to the front view, I can see that there's definitely uh, a, a difference there. This line here, this lighter gray line, reminds me that the sketch I'm currently working on, even though I've changed my view, is still right here. So the bottom, or where I'm sketching, uh, is still along this plane, okay? So use the view uh, change options often to get a better understanding of where you're working in 3D space. Okay, so now that I've got my positions parametrically set up, I can connect these circles together. I'm going to open the shortcuts menu with S. I'm going to type loft. Loft is going to let me connect these two circles together in the shape that I want. I've got a blue option and an orange option. I want to use the orange option because this will be uh, the option that lets me just create an uh, infinitely thin or, or two-dimensional surface between this circle and this circle. I start with a thin surface because I want to control the thickness that I add to it. So I need to separate those steps. So that's why that works like that. We don't need anything parametric here because it's snapped to the two circles. I'll hit okay. 
Now from here, just looking around at the, uh, at the uh, piping nozzle, uh, I can see that it's generally the shape and size that I want, so I'm happy with that, so I'll, I'll just keep going. If it was it, you can go back and edit the parameters at this point. I want to start to set up uh, some thickness here because I'm going to be 3D printing this, so I need to know how thick the walls of it are going to be. So I'll type S and, pre uh, and then type thicken. And the thicken option I want is the blue uh, solid bodies workspace thicken, which is the first one. I'm going to select the uh, surface as that body I want to thicken, and I'll thicken it from the uh, inside out, which is this direction here. And I want to be able to change my thickness. So I, now I know I need another parameter. So I'll type S and start typing para and go to change parameters again. And I'll call that thickness. And I think our thickness will be one millimeter. Good to label it. So I'll say that this is the thickness of the entire component. And this is the height of the, the entire component. Okay, so uh, I need to go back into my thickness. So I'll right click in the design history here and right clicking on my most recent one, which was the thickness one and going to edit feature. And instead of accepting that one millimeter thickness, I'm gonna change that to my thickness value. I like to edit the design history, even if it's the most recent one, uh, instead of doing control Z, because it gets us used to working parametrically. So these steps in the design history are also a type of parameter or a type of uh, action that we can go back to and reference. So uh, if you can avoid using uh, control Z because you need to make a small change to what you did, uh, right click on, even if it's the most recent, right click on it and go to edit feature instead of using control Z. Okay, so I've got a thickness of one millimeter here. Now I need to create uh, the cutout shape, the, the triangular shape that is going to serve the, the uh, purpose of creating the texture. Uh, so I need to pick a point in space for me to create that sketch on. And I'm gonna sketch on either this plane or this plane, whichever is going to be perpendicular uh, to, to my shape. Okay, uh, and now I'm going to uh, snap, snapping to the origin here, which is the origin right here, uh, I'm going to create a triangle. For simplicity, I'll draw it down here first and then demonstrate how to use constraints to position it exactly where I want it. So I'll just roughly sketch out a triangle. There we go. And Fusion has created some constraints for me, so it's locked these walls to, or these lines together. And it's prevented me from uh, rotating this line. I can move this dot around and I can move this dot around, but this angle doesn't change. Okay, so I wanna be able to uh, make sure that this stays as an equilateral triangle. That's the, the shape I've chosen to use. And I also want to make sure that uh, the, the size can be changed. So I'll need some more parameters. Press S, type para, go to change parameters. We wanna set the uh, length of the base of the triangle. So I'll call that the base length. And in millimeters here, uh, this part gets a little bit tricky because I also, not only do I wanna change the size of, uh, of the triangle, what I really, actually what I really wanna change is the number of triangles. I wanna fill the entire diameter with triangles. So yes, I'm changing the size of the triangle, but I'm actually changing the number of triangles uh, to create my texture and I want the triangles to just fill the diameter or fill the circumference of the nozzle. So if I want to uh, create uh, six triangles, I want them all to fit. If I want to create four triangles, I want them all to fit around the circumference of the, the bottom of the nozzle. Okay. So then I, I, so I have to figure out what is the base length of, uh, of one of them. Well, I know the diameter of the bottom. So the diameter uh, in, in is 20 in this case. Uh, and um, to give me the circumference, I just multiply that by pi, right? So my diameter times pi is the circumference of that circle. And that would be the length of all of the triangles if you were to line them up all together. So I'm just going to uh, set that up so that my expression is the uh, bottom diameter. My bottom diameter times pi, 
And then, uh, so this is my entire diameter uh, circumference here. This is my entire circumference here. And that would work if I had only one triangle, but I want to be able to divide that by the number of triangles. So I'm going to need something else to do that for me here. So I'll just hit OK, and then I want to have a parameter for the number of triangles. And I'll just put that as num triangles. And I don't need a unit there, so I'm going to have to select no units, because the number of triangles won't be six millimeters, it's just six. And so I'll go back and I'll edit my base length expression here so that I am also dividing this by six. Okay. And so now when I have six triangles, the length of one of the bases is 10.467. Let's see what that looks like when we add a dimension from the create menu in the sketch to the bottom of it. Already it's about 14, so I can tell that I'm roughly in, in the right ballpark. And this should be the base length of the triangle. There we go, 10.467. Using the constraints menu, I'm gonna add an equal constraint, clicking on this line and this line, and again on this line and this line. So I don't need to fix the uh, angles of the triangle at all because as long as these are the same length and they're, the lines are locked together with a collinear constraint, or sorry, a coincident constraint, the angles of the triangle will all be, always be correct. Okay, I'm going to use a midpoint constraint to constrain the bottom of the, so the base of the triangle with the origin of the nozzle here. And that puts it in the direct center of my design. That's going to easy, make the next step pretty easy. Okay, so finishing the sketch, I can see that I've got a, a cutout here and I can change it parametrically, so that's good. I might just hide my origin for a moment so that I can see it better. Now I want to use the emboss tool, so I'll press S, and I'll type emboss. The emboss tool is going to take a two-dimensional geometry, like our sketch, and it's going to wrap it around a, uh, a 3D uh, surface or a curved surface or, or really any, any surface in Fusion. So I've selected my entity as my triangle. And then for the faces I want to wrap it around, I'm going to select the inside face here. And I can see that it is starting to look what I want, like what I want. I can make some adjustments in the alignment between the sketch and the uh, projection here. But first I want to change the effect. So my effect is I want to uh, uh, deboss or cut out. And I want to do that by the thickness. So if I change my thickness, I want my deboss still to work. There we go. And then the alignment, I can see that the bottom of my triangle is still leaving a piece here because the origin, looking at it from the front view, front orthographic view, the origin ends up being above the base of the shape. And the reason for this is because when we thickened the initial surface, you can see that that surface there is highlighted in, in the transparent white color. That thicken was then um, projected directly off of the surface. And so it, because of the angle of the, of the shape, it lowers it a little bit. So we're just below the origin here. So we'll have to deal with that. So we'll create a little offset for this. So we'll, we'll go to para and change parameters. And the name of this, we'll call this triangle offset. We'll be nice and specific here. And I don't think we'll need much. I think we'll offset it by 0.5 millimeters to start with. And we're going to say that this pushes triangle cutout, cutouts downward. Okay. Our number of triangles is the number of triangles to cut. And the base length is length of one triangle. Should wrap around the bottom diameter. Okay. So I'm going to fix this emboss feature by right clicking on it and editing it. And I want to lower its vertical distance by my triangle offset. There we go. So I can see that that lowered it just enough to make the full cutout. So that's perfect. Now I can make a circular pattern. S, I started typing circular and here's my circular pattern. For the type, we can select faces, bodies, features, or components. When I select a feature, 
what it's ask, actually asking me to do is reference the design history to something I've done before. So I just did that in Boss. So that's my object. My axes, when I click select, I can the origin has appeared, and I can select this green axis here. And now I'm able to rotate it around, or what it does for me automatically is as if I did that emboss step six other times. Six happens to be the number we use for our parameter, but we should uh, enter a parameter here to make it uh, a parametric, and that was num triangles. There we go. No change because that was still six. I'll hit OK, and I can see that this gives me roughly the, the textured shape that I want to have. Now, if I open up my parameters and do some testing to see what this looks like, I should be able to change the bottom diameter to, let's say, make it a bit smaller to, so 15 millimeters. Okay, so the whole thing changed. That's not bad. I should be able to change the thickness to something twice as thick. And, oh no, I've got my triangles have disappeared. So my triangle offset, let's check that. Okay, so my thickness only works when it's one millimeter. What is happening there? Let's change this to two millimeters. All right, so I can see that we have uh, an issue where we're not actually just, we're just not cutting deep enough. Uh, so if I right click on my emboss feature and edit it, that's the second most recent one, my depth wasn't actually set to my thickness. So that's why. So I can use my negative, a negative thickness parameter there. Okay, so this is good, but we've got this bottom feature that isn't fully cut. And that's why we created that uh, offset parameter. So we've got a triangle offset. So we actually need to uh, offset that a, a little bit. Okay, so I can offset it by half a millimeter. If I go all the way to two millimeters, it pushes them down. And maybe this is, these are all just different types of textures I might want to actually uh, create with my piping nozzle. I think for this size of triangle, probably somewhere between 0.5 and 1 millimeter works well. My number of triangles, let's keep testing. So let's go to 8. Okay, so if I create uh, 8 triangles, uh, maybe I need to reduce my offset a little bit. So it looks like this triangle offset uh, can be pretty small. Okay, so down to 0.25. If I want to create a larger diameter, we'll make sure that still works. Okay, and now I still have eight. So it looks pretty good. One more thing that was part of our original design intent, and that was to be able to have uh, a ring around the top to make it fit better in our piping bag. So let's see if we can work from a sketch that we've already got. We'll turn our sketches on with the I symbol next to them in the design history. And it looks like I can work with this sketch here. So I'll right click on it and I'll edit that sketch. And I want, everything I do from here still, I wanna make sure it's parametric so that if I make a change in my parameters, it all updates. I'm gonna use the offset tool from the sketch shortcuts, pressing offset, and I'll offset this line by its thickness. So it's my thickness. if the thickness gets bigger, it'll push that line up. I'll finish that sketch. And now I've got a line right here in space. Again, there's a gap between the top edge of the outer cylinder and the top of the profile, because when we did that thicken, it did it normal to the surface or perpendicular from the surface, which was at an angle, okay? Which is fine because I can use the pipe tool, using the solid body pipe tool, selecting that edge that I thickened and I'll set that one at the, as the thickness as well. Okay, so the thicker this is, the thicker the rim becomes. And I'll allow that operation to join to it, so I haven't changed any of the default options here. And there we go, now I have the rim set up for me. I can hide my sketches and my construction folder and the origin so I can get a sense of just the uh, product itself. I can make changes to the number uh, of triangles by creating a small amount or, or a high number and making some tweaks to the various offsets that I've created. So let's try it with two. Can we, can we go as small as two triangles? 
Well, here we've got two triangles set up there, so that's not so bad. Uh, our offset can be just a little bit more. Okay, that's good. Now, I'm looking at our expression, and I'm actually expecting these two triangles to take up the entire diameter of the nozzle. So it looks like there's something that I need to go back and fix, which would be making this not divided just by six, but by actually referencing the number of triangles. There we go. This is actually more, it looks a little bit weirder, but it's a little bit more accurate to what our design intent was, because I should be able to offset my triangles by quite a bit now and push that down. So this is what it really should look like with just two triangles, because we're taking up most of the bottom diameter. So our base length was incorrect. Maybe I could push them down a little bit more, depending on the kind of desired texture I want. Now, let me change the triangles to three. So I've got three. They don't take up the base diameter, but I've got a huge offset here. So I'll change my offset back to one. Maybe I want 1.5. There we go. Now I've got three. So now we start to see the power of doing this parametrically. And we can experiment and troubleshoot as we go. Do five triangles work? Yep, not so bad. Maybe I want to change the actual texture of just these points. So that's where this offset piece really comes in. Made it a little bit bigger to round off those corners. Or maybe I want to have slightly sharper corners. Maybe I can go to point 0.75. There we go. So I've got just a bit sharper of corners there. All right, let's do one more and push it to the max. We'll do number of triangles at 25. Gonna go really fine here, and I want a really pointed edge here. So can I get away with no offset? Probably not. What about 0.1 millimeters? There we go. So I've got a really, really fine texture here, and I can go really quickly back to just having two triangles. So there you have it, using uh, parameters to manipulate a piping nozzle, which can then be 3D printed.